Have you ever wanted to create your own programmable drone from scratch? Well, no matter what your reason is for building a drone, I am planning on creating a live cohort based workshop where I'll show you how to build a drone from the ground up, get it flying up into the air, how to program the Raspberry Pi flight computer to control the drone autonomously, and how to integrate computer vision for gesture control. So if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, then watch right till the end where you can apply for this workshop via a survey that I'm running right now. So they always say start with the end in mind. So let me show you the end result of what you can expect to be building once you complete this workshop. So this is one of the videos I created for my YouTube channel, Augment the Startups. You can see I gave it the take of command. Using computer vision, it'll take off. It'll stabilize and hover right until I give it the command to land. And just like that, it lands on its own. Magic, right? So this was one of my proudest moments in drone building. So first and foremost, why do we need to build a programmable AI drone? Well, drones are dominating the news quite often. For example, Amazon are already using drones for their package deliveries. But why let the giants have all of the fun? But imagine using drones for faster grocery delivery and make fast foods even faster. I mean, who doesn't like fresh and hot food, right? Next up, we can also use drones for agriculture surveying. Now, if you have a large field of crops, it can be quite labor intensive to survey your entire crop. This is where drones come into play. Not only can they irrigate the soil, but they can also administer safe pesticides and identify plant disease before it spreads. So it's not only being used for a person that's stuck out at sea, but it can also be used for firefighting and search and rescue operations. Geographic mapping is another application where drones shine. It's because they can reach both low and high altitudes, which makes them super versatile with this regard. Enforcement and border control is yet another application. Now, normally at the borders, they have a bunch of cameras and these are mostly fixed cameras that are situated over there. Now, imagine if you have an illegal immigrant that crosses over to the border and manages to run away. Well, you can get a drone to track and follow them until they finally caught. Drones are also great for gathering information for disaster management. And the final one is for aerial photography for journalism and fall. Now, the reason why I made it a bit small over here, because you can get off the shelf drones just for this application. You won't really need to create a custom drone just for film and journalism, unless you have some really specific requirements. So what will be covered in this workshop? So first of all, we'll build a drone from scratch. I'll show you all of the components that you need, how to put them together, as well as the function of each component. Next up, we cover how to fly a drone in a safe setting and how to fly it responsibly. Once that is done, I'll show you how to set up and program your Raspberry Pi for autonomous flight. And then we'll add on some computer vision magic so that you can control your drone using body gestures, like you've seen in the demo. And then finally, we'll work through drone optimization, troubleshooting, as well as more responsible flying. Now, this workshop will be a live cohort based workshop, which means that a group of us will be into one class and I'll be teaching the lectures and you'll be free to ask questions, ask for help, get feedback on what you've built and much, much more. So this workshop will run over a month. There'll be between two to four lectures per week and will run between 45 to 75 minutes per session. Depending on the initial survey, we'll either take between 10 to 100 students and then based on how many students there are, we'll have a bunch of mentors to help you out, ask questions. We'll also make some breakout rooms where everyone can interact with each other and basically network with each other. And then there's also a certificate. We're still deciding whether this will be just a certificate of completion or if it's a certificate based on completion of the final project. So you're probably asking yourself, who is this workshop for? So we're targeting mostly businesses and enterprises that want to use drones for their own applications. We're also looking at universities and university sponsored students, researchers, as well as research institutions. Now, the goal of this is that we want people to apply what they've learned to solve real world applications. So this workshop is action based. So we encourage our students to take action 
and not just to learn passively. We want you to apply this knowledge in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. So you must be asking yourself, what do I need? Or what are the requirements? Well, first up, you need some Python programming background because once we build a drone, you're going to need to program it and we solely use Python for programming the drone. Having an electronics background is beneficial. On top of that, you also need a laptop because we may need to program the drone out in the field. Next, we also need the drone kit. We're still deciding whether to provide this as a full kit or the student can source it themselves. The benefit of providing it as a kit is that everything is packaged into one box. It may be one or two different shipments, but you'll receive everything. The downside of this is that it'll be a bit more expensive. The alternative is student source where you can source all of the components locally and thus will be much cheaper for you to obtain. Moving on, we are going to be doing some soldering because there are wires that connect to the main distribution board and we need to solder this securely so that nothing goes loose on our drone. Speaking about securing things, cable ties are your friends. There'll be a couple of components that we'll use either some double-sided tape along with some cable ties to ensure again that nothing goes loose. You'll need an Allen key set, a screwdriver set, some pliers and clippers. And this one is optional, which is a 3D printer. If you have one, that's great. If you don't, you don't have to worry. But I found it to be really useful. In one case, I had to mount my battery at the bottom of the drone. Now, the battery that I used was so big, it actually went beyond the landing gear. So that meant when the drone lands, it will actually land on the battery as opposed to the landing gear. And as we know, that is not the safest thing to do. So what I did, I printed out some really cool spider looking legs. You probably saw that in the demo, but it really came in handy when I needed to print specific parts. And then finally, you need a safe area in which to fly your drone. So this is according to your country's regulation. Well, why learn from me, Augment Startups? Well, I qualified with my master's in electronic engineering from the University of Johannesburg. And I've just recently reached 90,000 plus subscribers on YouTube where I teach electronics, robotics, AI, and computer vision. And also mentioned that I've built a couple of Raspberry Pi drones. Over here you can see those 3D printed spider legs that I was talking about earlier. In addition to this, I've also played around with drone swarms. And the final and most important part is that I've made the mistakes and I've learned from them. So you don't have to. Over here you can see that my drone flipped on the side. It started smoking. I don't know if you can see the smoke. But I was in deep panic when this happened. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I just ran straight for my fire extinguisher to douse the flames. But it turned out that one of the electronic speed controllers caught on fire. So if you're doing this on your own, you could encounter this. But with my guidance, you'll definitely avoid situations like this. Okay, so up till now, if you're happy and you're asking yourself, okay, this is all great. How much will the workshop cost? So we're planning for the course to be between 2,000 to 3,000 US dollars per student. And this will be based on the Maven platform. If you don't know, the CEO of Maven is the ex-CEO of Udemy. Now to the non-endorsed students, this price may be very frightening and I completely understand. So the lessons will be made available as a self-paced course after the live workshop. It will be cheaper than the live workshop, but you won't be able to ask questions, get instant feedback, ask the mentors for help, not forgetting all of the friends that you'll make along the way. Now, because this is the first time that we're going to be running this workshop, we'll be running a beta version of this workshop for around $750 US per student, as opposed to the $2,000 to $3,000 admission fee. So if you want to be part of this beta workshop and get that huge discount, then you can sign up at the survey, which I'll show you in just a minute. So just note that prices exclude the hardware and the kit. The kit we estimate to be between $600 to $1,200 US dollars, and this is excluding shipping and taxes. We are still confirming the price of the kits and also to ensure that we get best value for money. Now something important to note is that the battery may be excluded due to shipping regulations. And this is because courier companies are worried that LiPo batteries may explode and thus may be a hazard to other packages that they're shipping. So the best alternative is to get these LiPo batteries sourced locally. And then as mentioned before, I'm gonna run a survey that will essentially determine if the student wants to source the kit themselves or if we should provide the kit for you. Like I've mentioned, there's pros and cons to both. The first one will be less expensive. You can get things locally. And the kit option is where everything is provided for you in the kit. You don't have to hunt for the parts, but it'll be slightly more expensive. 
So if everything checks out so far for you and you say, I'm interested, then the first thing you need to do is to complete a survey, which you can find on the following slide. This is a no application survey, so you can sign it up and just speculate whether you want to do it or not. The next step is the qualification interview. So this is basically where we'll interview you to essentially see if you are a right fit for the workshop. And as mentioned, this is also no obligation. Once the interview is complete, we'll then open up the platform to applications. This will be a 10 day window where you can enroll in the course. And this will take place one to two months in advance, just so that we can get the kit shipments out. Because as you know, shipping anything can take a while. And if the admin and logistic challenges are out of the way, we can then commence the workshop. So if you're ready to get started, you can apply here at bit.ly drone workshop survey. There'll also be a link down below where you can apply with no obligation. Great, so thank you for watching right till the end. If you have any other questions, you can contact me via WhatsApp at augmentedstartups.info forward slash WhatsApp. You can also contact me via email at rkanji at augmentedstartups.com. Cool, and we'll see you soon.